Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. Alright, so the Champions League is back. I'm sure you're all on the verge of strokes. So excited for the theme tune to be back stuck in your ears. Anyway, let's take a look at every remaining team left in the competition and just find their worst, most embarrassing result this season. Right, let's go. Barcelona 2-1 versus Cadiz. Cadiz. Literally, Cadiz. Ronald Koeman, you sacrificed the chance to lead your country out of Euro 2021 for this? This was Cadiz's first win over Barca since 1991 and no wonder their stadium as well as impressive looking is an overflowing toilet. I'm sorry, but how can you dominate 82% possession of the ball and still lose the game? Alfaro de Grado is a Middlesbrough flop who turns 36 this year, and here he was coming off the bench to score the winner. You might think, oh, Cadiz is a plucky young Spanish underdog. No, no, their entire football club is La Liga's sweaty armpit. Barca had 100 million pound superstars on the pitch, plus the greatest footballer of all time, and so to just chuck three points in the bin like that, no wonder they're not going to win the league. PSG 3-2 versus Lorient. With the amount of money PSG chuck about as if it's a monopoly cash, I don't understand understand how they aren't able to win every game in France, especially against the likes of Lorient, a team stuffed in relegation battle who'd recently conceded 5 at home to Monaco. They turned it around the last 10 minutes, scoring twice to win 3-2, but Mauricio Pochettino, hang your head in shame. Good grace, Lorient and Trevor Chaloba in their team. You know, the guy recently of Ipswich in Huddersfield Town? Neymar should have used that boy as a piece of string to clean his teeth. How do you have the likes of Di Maria, Neymar, Icardi and Mbappe all on that pitch together and still not win the game? RB Leipzig 3-2 versus Mainz. Well, this is a result which will probably have had Jurgen Klopp dancing about his kitchen. Listen, Mainz 05 are a German team stuck on 13 points, only being kept off the bottom of the Bundesliga table by the other circus act that is Schalke. Tyler Adams stucks Leipzig 1-0 up, and considering this team are Champions League regulars and title contenders, they should not have wound up losing 3-2. Liverpool 7-2 versus Aston Villa. Yeah, it's six months later and I still don't understand what happened here. People say Liverpool fell apart without Virgil van Dijk this season. Well, are we forgetting he was on the pitch where they could see the 7 of Villa Park? There were nearly 70 points separating these two teams last season. 70 goddamn points and yet Villa are the ones who win by five goals. Listen, I know they landed well in the summer but a full strength Liverpool team conceding a first half hat-trick to a former Brentford striker? Trent Alexander-Arnold's being held up as the best right back on the planet and yet here's Jack Grealish eating his career to pieces with a knife and fork. Yes, alright, Klopp had stuck a walking post box in goal but still, seven goals at Villa? The most ridiculous freak result in the Premier League of all time. FC Porto 3-2 versus Maritimo. Listen, let's not beat around the bush. Ever since Halloween, FC Porto have been pretty much near perfect but yeah, third game of the season. Clearly the players look like they just drunk half a litre of Calpol each because they just sleepwalk to a 3-2 defeat home to lowly Maritimo. I hope they don't bring that sort of energy and work rate into the game with Juventus because if they do, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to return to his home country and take a proverbial dump all over your shoes. Grace the boat, turn up like they did against Maritimo and he'd probably have two hat-tricks before half time. Juventus 3-0 versus Fiorentina. I'm still not entirely sure how Andrea Porto is still on the job. We're nearly in March and Juventus are third in the league. Oh please, can you imagine if there wasn't an Italian legend sitting in that dugout? But instead, just an unproven football hipster like Rito Sarri. Lads, ain't of Juve Ultras digging him a grave in Central Turin. Anyway, their worst performance ever result without a doubt losing 3-0 home to Fiorentina three days before Christmas. Lads, they were coming up against a team who had won nine games. They had nearly 40-year-old Frank Ribery on the wing. Lads, to put it in context, when Perlo won the World Cup in 2006, he played against Ribery in the final. This fella has been around so long, by all rights, he should be close to coffee up his lunch whenever he runs longer than 10 minutes. And yet, he utterly ruined this Juventus team. You might think Fiorentina are a big club, right? So what's the problem? Well, maybe it's that they've been under cottage pie for most of the season. Recently conceded six against Napoli and are managed by the Italian version of Roy Hodgson. Someone whose career was chewed into at Weenabix after the 2014 World Cup. The man is a national joke and yet here he is, outwitting Perlo as if he's playing chess against a six-year-old child. Sevilla 1-0 versus Ibar. Listen, I'm tempted to pick the match where Sevilla conceded four goals home to Olivier Giroud. Listen, he is a top-class striker, but he's a centre-forward who doesn't really prioritise goals. As proven by the fact he won the World Cup for France without scoring a single goal all tournament. So it's a bit like being knocked out cold by Floyd Mayweather. Again, a world-class boxer, but who doesn't really specialise in knockout punches. Anyway, Sevilla's worst result was probably losing one at home to Ibar in October, and Ibar team were probably going to be relegated from the league. Borussia Dortmund 5-1 versus Stuttgart. Yeah, this has been a sloppy season for Borussia Dortmund. This is a club with enough attacking Arsenal to utterly savage the Bundesliga this season. No, they've mostly had the concentration of a dilapidated seagull. They've had some shocking results, but the worst was probably conceding five home to Stuttgart in December. Yes, I realize Stuttgart are former German champions and a big club, but make no mistake about it, that is not a good Stuttgart team. And so getting slapped up 
5 one at home like this. This is the same week Man United were sticking 6 past Leeds in a game where they could have probably scored 15. So Jane and Sancho must have got home that night and punched his agent in the face. Jude Bellingham is a talented player but during this game he looked like a cat who had been chucked in a swimming pool. And I think Birmingham were tired of shirt number. Atletico Madrid 1-0 versus Cornella. Atletico Madrid are going to win their second La Liga title of Diego Simeone and Luis Suarez is going to dance on Barcelona's grave. So I really don't think there's a single Atleti fan out there who's been kept up at night over this result. But still, don't get me wrong, on the night it happened, the fans must have drowned their tonsils in six pints worth of toothpaste. Anything to just dilute the embarrassment. It was the second round of the Copa del Rey. They hadn't been dumped out in the second round since 1987. And yet here, they lose 1 0 a third division team, Cornella. Again, on a pitch that probably felt like standing on soggy, crunchy nuts, Cornella packed their defence with five defenders and they went 1 0 up after seven minutes. But it wasn't the case of sit in and defend. No, no, they had 15 shots and Atletico didn't have a single shot on target. Yes, he was a weakened team, but still, Saul Niguez, Jeffrey Condompia, Arsenal's lord and saviour Lucas Torreira was on that pitch. No wonder they wanted to send it back to London in a suitcase. Chelsea 3-1 vs Arsenal. Let's be honest, this was the result which flattened Chelsea's season. Travelling to an Arsenal team went one in nearly two months, with Mikel Arteta hanging onto his job by the length of a hamster's eyelash. Not only that, Lampard was bringing his Chelsea team to play a bunch of prepubescent Arsenal children, and yet found themselves 3-0 down after an hour? Just another mess of a performance. A result which turned on Arsenal's fortunes, but ultimately ruined Lampard's career. Lazio 3-0 vs Sampdoria. Yeah, this has been a patchy season for Lazio. Sure, Chiro Mobile is still banging in the goals, but there have definitely been some big fat slip ups. I'll go for the mid October 3 0 defeat of Sampdoria as the worst one, with Simone and Zaghi being completely outthought by Claudio Ranieri, a guy who everyone assumed would have just been stuck in a nursing home playing Duck Duck Goose after his miserable Fulham job. And I'm sorry, but if you're supposed to be a Champions League elite team, you should not be conceding goals to Fabio Cagliera, a guy who made his personal debut last century. Good Christ, this guy is older than some granddads. Well, Blackpool granddads anyway. Bayern Munich 2 2 versus Holstein Kiel. This is arguably the most embarrassing result in the history of Bayern Munich. When you factor in the fact they won the treble last season and they've already lifted a treble this season, sort of, good Christ, this is some sort of unstoppable trophy lifting juggernaut. This is Germany's best team by a mile, who've won the last two DFB Pokal Cup finals. In the last decade, they've reached the final seven times. It's an almost annual tradition, a date that's forever written in the Bayern calendar. So imagine being Holstein Kiel, a football club that sounds like a type of Polish beer. It's a tiny team stuck halfway down the Bundesliga second tier. When they saw Bayern pulled out of the hat, they could legitimately have just died on the spot. Bayern hadn't lost to a lower league opposition since 2004, so I mean, come on, what chance did they have? Bayern didn't even play a weak team either. Look at that, there's at least £200 million worth of talent up front. And yet they scrap a 95th minute equaliser to draw 2-2 before seeing them off on penalties. Honestly, one of the greatest ever cup shocks. And lads, the great thing is, if they just see off Rottweiss Essen, then little old Holstein Kiel are just one game away from the final. Just utterly mental. Real Madrid 2 1 versus Alcoyano. Zinedine Zidane is lucky he's got Madrid hero worship status in the bank because not many managers would survive a result like this. Can you imagine if someone like Rafa Benitez had overseen a Copa del Rey exit at little old Cayano? He'd probably have been thrown on a bonfire. Yes, 1 0 up and coasting at third division Alcoyano, who scored a last minute equalizer to force extra time, and then they bang in a 115th minute winner. Lads, Madrid had World Cup winners on that pitch. Footballing legends. Good Christ, 100 million pound superstars, and yet they couldn't beat a bunch of Spanish postmen. Atalanta 5 0 versus Liverpool. Listen, considering 5 at home to Liverpool isn't the end of the world, but I think Atalanta should be aiming higher than just keeling over and dying like that. Good Christ, this is a team who nearly reached the Champions League final last season. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, and this Liverpool team had just conceded 7 at Villa Park. They were there for the taking. Come on, just believe in yourselves. But yeah, Diego Jota banged in a hat-trick and the Reds just shoved Atalanta's dignity down a pothole. Borussia Bunch and Gladbach 2-1 versus Cologne. Borussia Bunch and Gladbach are a maddeningly inconsistent team, but of course they are. They've got a football hipster manager like Marco Rose in charge. One week they're boarding on world class, the next they're having the credibility dragged through a dishwasher. They just lost 2-1 at home to Cologne. If any Man City players were watching that, they'll have been licking their damn lips. Man City 5-2 vs Leicester City. And finishing off one of the most ridiculous results in the list. Yeah, we're gonna see a newly crowned Premier League champion who literally just conceded five goals at home in one goddamn match. This is arguably Pep Guardiola's most catastrophic moment in charge of Man City. Just another mess from start to finish. Jamie Vardy banged in a hat trick and there were three damn penalties. The centre back partnership of Eric Garcia and Nathan Ake didn't last long in this club, but for those 90 minutes, it arguably looked like one of the worst defensive pairings in Premier League history. Just a couple of centre back custard creams being utterly chewed apart by a former Halifax striker. I mean, what an utter disaster. If that's it, if you in the comments, you know, what do you think was the worst result for each Champions League team? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.